Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the LTN 92 nav system. This is going to be a quick start tutorial. I've made a much longer, more complete video on this system and I will share that in the link. However, that video is two and a half hours long. This one's going to be a much shorter, quicker, you know, quick start cheat guide if you like. It's going to go over the very basics of this LTN 92. If at any point you feel like, oh, I want to watch the full thing and invest the time. The manual itself was, I think, 188 pages long. And that'll explain why the other video was two and a half hours. In this one, we're just going to go over the key essentials to get you from A to B without any messing around, without any faff. This system versus the older SIVA, we'll take a look at that. We'll see how this system compares versus the much newer FMCs or the McDo's in the Airbuses. We'll take a look in two phases of this. We've got the pre-flight, so we'll take a look at how to align the system, how to enter waypoints. And then once we take off, we'll look at how we go from the nav or the radio mode in departure over to the INS, which would be the LTN-92. We'll take a look at how to check the flight plan status, distance, times and so on. We'll take a look at how we can verify how accurate this system is and how to update it. We'll do a quick tutorial on the actual in-flight updating of this system. It's got three ways to do it, as well as editing, editing, as well as adding in, editing and deleting single waypoints. And we're all going to do that in X Plane 12 in the 74 by Fearless. But again, it doesn't matter which. Uh, simulator have which aircraft you have as long as you have the LTN 92 this tutorial is going to work and so here we are we're on the ground at Boston International uh, just with the default Sunni and Edge plane which is actually really good right when you crank things up it does look really good and uh, certainly not flight sim levels but of course all this fits on your hard drive and so there we go the 74-2 by Felix is the LTN 92 system the first thing that you have to do is establish a solid continuous power source to the aircraft. And by that, I mean, don't be chopping and changing between ground power and APU while this thing's aligning, much like the newer systems, you've got to keep the continuous power supply. And so I'll be back once that has been achieved. All right, so with ground power now connected to the aircraft, I'm just going to accept the ground power there. We're now fully supplied. Make sure that you come to the front of the uh, cockpit upstairs and get your essential master buses one and two on and then take both of these switches and move them from the off into the nav position by both i mean all three you've got your pilots your first officers and your flight engineers panel while the system is aligning you'll see the align light come on here make sure that you do not move the aircraft do not change the power supply until that align light goes off coming downstairs now we see we've got the system here ready to continue. You have to perform the alignment process on all three of the systems individually. And I suggest you do it at the same time because the system doesn't actually begin refining its alignment until you give it its position. So it's what it gets its course alignment when you turn it on. That's fine. But the fine alignment doesn't take place until you put its position in. And so if we come in a little closer, I'll just do it on one of the systems to save time. But you've got to repeat this process for all three. And so the first thing here you can see, Fearless, you, if you've got a latest IRAC cycle, i.e. Navigraph subscription, you'll see today's year and month in there. If not, you'll have a different year and month. Doesn't matter. You can make use of it just like the more modern FMCs with any IRAC cycle. Click clear to continue. And it's now going to want to know your position. So if we scroll down to the location ID, we're at Boston, so if you put the four-letter identifier in, Kilo Osco, Kilo, sorry, Kilo Bravo Osco Sierra, hit enter, that's going to accept that. That's going to give us a GMT time. You've got to confirm that. That happens to be UK winter time, just GMT, which is Zulu, which is UTC time. It's all the same thing, so it's nice and easy for me. As long as that matches what it says on the clock, it's correct. Then we've got the day, the 21st of the 11th, 2022. That's the time I'm recording this tutorial. OK, and then we've got the lat long here for Boston. Now you want to confirm that is the case. And for those of you who may be unsure how to do that, just get your charts out. Go for K boss for Boston. Come over here to the airports page 10 9. 
And again, this is assuming that you have a Navigraph subscription. Come to your top corner of your 10.9, you see North 42.21.80. North 42.21.78. We'll round that off. It's going to be 0.8. And so that's correct. On the west side, we've got 071.004. On the west side, we've got 71.00.38. And again, round off 0.38. You're going to get point four, and so I'm satisfied that that's okay. And with that, we can proceed on to the legs page. And I have actually created a simple flight plan for this. If we come over to the uh, charts page here, um, and of course, with the magic of television, I've been able to make that chart appear that I forgot to put in. In any case, so here we go. So we've got Boston. This is going to be a short flight from Boston to Washington. And if we scroll down, it's just generated in the sim brief here. This is the flight plan that we intend to fly. If we come over to the routing page here, we see we've got a whole bunch of waypoints, but they include, if you look, a whole... Well, first of all, we've got the SID here, the... Uh, I'm going to call it the South Sox 6 departure. Who knows what it really is? Sox... Sox C6. <laughs> um, that gun goes direct to Buzzard. So we can use all of these RNAV waypoints. That's fine. South Sox, Buzzard... Uh, say VOR, HTO. Here we've got Juliet 174 Airway. That takes us to Zizi. We can't program airways into this. And so to get around that, I suggest you check on the charts that there's not a load of intermediate waypoints that are going to throw you off. You could also scroll down further through your waypoints here. And here it's going to actually give you the specific waypoints along the airway. So for example here, We've got the Victor 308 airway and we can see it using about three waypoints along that airway. But all of those waypoints are prescribed here. So we've got Laughlin, ATR32 and Chops. Those are the points that you need in here. And um, in fact, you know, for simplicity, let's go it in here. And so you've got your RNAV departure here. You can program RNAVs in. Again, it's, it's a bit of a longer topic. So I suggest you watch the long video if you are wishing to use RNAV arrivals and departures. But for now, let's use South Sox as our first waypoint. So coming over here, if below your position, which is where it defaults in, that's where we are now, come over to your waypoint page. You can see waypoint zero there with the P in the chevron. So that just indicates your present position. Your present position is always waypoint zero. And what I mean by that is, don't expect to take off, fly around for half an hour and then go, oh, I want to go back to waypoint zero because that's where I came from. It won't be. Waypoint zero in half an hour will be wherever you are in half an hour's time. Um, and so just be aware of that. Waypoint zero is always the current position of the aircraft. And so, yeah, so first off here, to put the entry in, get the line between these two uh, orange dots. You see there's these two orange dots on the middle line. Hit enter, you get to get these dotted lines, and now we can start typing in. So if we go S S O X S, and there we've got the South Sox. Notice here, if we press enter to confirm that, we've got the letter A here. If we switch that over to the N using this button here, it switches between the alphas and the numerics. We get to type in the numbers here versus the letters E, L, and S. And so just be uh, aware of that. And the other thing is, if you end up typing letters and you're actually wanting to go through these as menu buttons, you also press that button. So get the alphas into the numerics, the A-N, and then not only is that going to give you the, the numbers here, but it's going to enable you, for example, to come to the data page here. And so don't forget that. It's uh, it's an easy one to forget even after you've been using it a while. It's just a case of getting hang of it. All right, so we've got South Sox in there. We've got the top of climb. We're not going to obviously put that in. We've then got Buzzard, B-U-Z-R-D. Hit enter and next line. And I'll be back when I've filled them all in. Actually, I'll be back right now because after Buzzard, and look at this, we've got a VOR waypoint. And we see it's direct to Sandy Point. And the VOR code for that is uh, 1780. The three-letter ICAO is Sierra Echo Yankee, S-E-Y. And so we can put VORs in this just the same as the more modern um, systems. So if we put in, say, hit enter, look at this. 
it's saying it's not immediately accepting because it's saying here that there's actually two beacons, one of two, in the database. Sometimes you'll type a beacon and it'll say like there's five or even ten. It just depends how often this beacon is used. So somewhere else in the world is another beacon by code Sierra Echo Yankee. Now, if we look, the first one it's suggesting is 41 North, 71 West. We can see below that it's actually saying, and that's in the USA. Now, if we scroll down to the uh, second beacon using these arrow buttons here, we can see there's another one, 41 North, 123 East, and that looks like it's going to be in China, CHN. Clearly, China isn't right when we're trying to go from Boston uh, to Washington. Um, USA sounds much better. So if we scroll down to uh, Sierra 1, um, option 1 there, we can see USA. In addition, 71 West, if we take a look at our uh, options here, we see there West 71. And the other one was 123 East. And clearly 123 East not matching, not by a long way. And so there's numerous ways that you can verify you've got the correct one there. So make sure you get that. The next one is the Hamptons. Uh, I'll stay with you just to see what happens there. Hamptons. And you can see that one's accepted. Whoops. That one's accepted right off the bat. So apparently there is no other VOR beacon in the world by the codes Hotel Tango Oscar. And now we're going to go to Rifle. And once again, I'll bring you back once we've uh, completed the list. Here we're coming up to a waypoint that's partly letters, partly numbers. And so we've got the ATR in. ATR, we see then it's 32. And so as you'd expect, after ATR, switch to your numbers there and you've got ATR 32. After chops, we've got a waypoint here called GED, G or Golf, Alpha, Romeo, Echo, Delta. We type that one in, hit enter. That's actually coming up as a, a duplicate as well, one of two. And so just like with the VOR beacons, it's a case of scrolling through and finding out which one's most suitable. Clearly, the 76 West seems a lot better than 124 East. And as before, you've got the countries here, USA. I'm guessing that could be Philippines. And so we'll roll with number one. And here we are having entered the final waypoint tapper. Then you can see it's a direct to the end airport. And just with the ANAV positions as well as VORs, NDB beacons as well, you can put the four letter IKO code in for airports. And so we're going to do that for now. And again, if you want to get more precise and looking at uh, ANAV approaches, uh, you know what to do. And so there we've got KIAD. You can actually use airports as an entire waypoint. And so, for example, if we were then to go on to, uh, uh, let me see, KDCA, you can put that in and it will use the entire, uh, let's clear that, clear that. It can use the entire airport as a waypoint. It's not like the new FMCs where you can only put a waypoint in for either departure, arrival or alternates. On this, you can use them uh, as a waypoint. So we'll clear that out. Remember, versus the more modern systems, these do not care for speed, altitude, thrust settings, anything like that. It is purely a two-dimensional navigation device. Take a look at aligning the flight engineers panel here, much like before. We can put in the location ID. Here you can also put in the lat long. And of course, you've got your north, south, and then followed by your east, west, whether it's a latitude or longitude. And you can get that information from the airports page. Now, you can't just put the airports uh, position in. That's going to be accurate enough. But if you want to knock yourself out, you can find out which particular stand you are at and get the gate coordinates from here and then put those more precise coordinates in. While it's not absolutely essential that these three systems match perfectly, I would recommend that uh, you just put in the airport page to save time. There's nothing really that you gain by being as precise as the airport itself or the specific gate. And bearing in mind, these systems do self-align once in the air anyway. And so even if they are half a mile off or so when you take off, it, they'll uh, sort themselves out. In any case, uh, for latitude again, instead of scrolling this, you just start with the uh, north or south. And then you'd put whichever gate that you're in and uh, type in, in the numbers uh, in the following way and then hit enter. Be a good time actually to come over to the status page while we're waiting for it to align. And so on the left hand side on the menu here, you've got STS. That's going to be your status. If we see here currently the align code is 10, 
Now you can see it reckons there's about 5.1 minutes to go. So this isn't 5 minutes, 10 seconds. It's 5.1. So in other words, 5.5 minutes. Those of you already calling out to the screen, well, yeah, it's 5 minutes, 30 seconds, obviously. Yeah, every every YouTuber imagines that when people have a go at them, we all talk with a voice like that. because We'll wait for that to complete and I'll bring you back. Of course, I know you lot don't really talk like that. So here we have the South Sox 6 departure. This is the RNAV that we're supposedly doing. And you can insert all of these waypoints into your uh, LTN 92 device here. And then what you've got to do is follow the speeds and heights. Now, again, if you want to see a much longer, more detailed tutorial on this, check out the long video where we do an RNAV approach, including the final bits. So we do the arrival and the approach. All of it is RNAV on... Um, the longer two and a half hour video but uh, you can see how you can put these waypoints in we're just gonna for the sake of the tutorial get up to speed and uh, this is going to be our primary waypoint uh, so we'll give ourselves radar vectors to there all right bringing you back the alignment is about to complete on the uh, flight engineer station and if we can see the align light they're still underway Sky conditions, fuel. Aliatus reads off. And there we go, the alignment is complete. And if you come on down to the flight engineer's panel, see now the status code here says nav one. That means that the alignment is complete. It's now ready to go. That means we can come over to the flight engineer's panel where the APU is ready and waiting and put it on bus. So we'll put it on the left side, we'll put it on the right, and with that we're ready to go. Let's uh, shut the ATIS up as well. We've got that. So you join us en route to the runway here at Boston and ATC have said to us, right, you've got to get the first waypoint in, even though you're not going to follow the rest. And so this is going to be a great time for me to show the first stage. So we're taking off runway 25 right and we've, we, uh, sorry, 22 right. We can see that after takeoff, we've got to go 215 to intercept 144 to TJ and uh, and then on as per well we've been told we just need the first waypoint here which is tj so if we come over here there we can see tj there so we need to take off and come left towards that specific waypoint so tango juliet alpha yankee yankee so it's going to be a great time uh, for me to program that in and so if we come down here see Whatever page you're on, come over to the waypoints page and scroll up to present uh, as far as you can and hit enter there. That's uh, clear. We actually want the first one. And so we're going to have to rename this one. So clear that one. Tango, Juliet, Alpha, Yankee, Yankee. OK. And then hit enter again. And now we can have that South Sox back in SS. Um, o X S enter there we go and so now with TJ in there our first route we're actually going to follow that straight away on departure so here we are runway 22 right we've just been given clearance to take off so we're going to put all the forward facing lights on strobes wing lights on as well everything over there checks out we've got body gear steering to go down here transponder onto Tara we'll get the weather radar on as well just in case start put a little bit of power on so we don't stop over to the engineers panel all the packs off and with that we're good for takeoff flaps and trims and everything's already been set We'll straighten the nose out, that'll do body gear steering off, autopilots, directors on, it's up to 5,000, runway heading is in, let's wind them up, start the clock, and that's going to be it, let's get the uh, togas in. Cross set. Quite a strong crosswind from the right. 
fast acceleration. We're not very heavy today. Short flight. Gear up. Gear up. And my initial climb was uh, it's about 15. And at this point now we're going to go direct to TJ. I'm already reducing back to max continuous. Let's get the autopilot on at this point. So if we come over now to the flight plan page, we see there's no track selected. So in order to uh, resolve that situation, we've got to come over to the waypoints page tell it where to go sorry legs page tell it where to go so once hitting legs page hit enter enter twice and that's going to go to our first waypoint in this case tj hit enter now if we come to the flight plan page we see it's in there and if we come over to the course page it's going to tell us where to go in this case 148 degrees and so let's manually turn the heading to 148 Uh, vertical speed a little aggressive. Let's shallow that one out a bit. Make sure we don't go through five. Now the acceleration beginning to take place. Here you can see we did go shoot a little bit further through by 0 0.5. So that means half a mile. Take a look on the flight plan page. We can see we're 0 0.1 miles away. It's then automatically going to jump over to south socks because that's the next one in the route notice the next fmcs over here don't have anything in they don't even have waypoints in because we didn't sync that up so we'll have a real quick look at that in a minute for now south socks we're less than a mile away and so that waypoint is going to jump over momentarily and because we're on heading mode clearly the autopilot is not going to follow it if we switch this from radio to INS, this is going to give us information with regards to our current flight plan here. So at this point, let's move over now to South Sox. Now, it hasn't jumped over because we weren't close enough to it. And so the quick way around that, we can just go on the direct to page here and we'll type it in. So we'll go direct to, we'll start with SS and there's South Sox. It's going to suggest only uh, waypoints that are in our flight plan. So we'll go direct there, we'll hit enter, enter to accept, and now that's like doing a direct two. Now you can see on here as well, because we are in INS mode, we're not in radio mode, this is going to give us uh, information on the HSI with regards to our next waypoint. 26 miles away at South Sox, and you can see because it's to our right and we haven't started the turn to our right, we're drifting further and further to the left. That's indicated by this HSI needle here. And each one of these dots represents 3.7 mile, 3.75 nautical miles. So if this, if we continued on present course and let this line deviate all the way over to the second dot, those of you up on your maths will say, well, that's seven and a half nautical miles. And you'd be right. And of course that goes either way. So to correct this, we're going to manually change the heading. I'm also going to work flaps because uh, we're getting far that's too fine. fast. I'll go to climb. And of course, at any time, we can also switch the autopilot navigation from heading over to INS. So we'll do that now. And that's uh, essentially now going to enable LNAV mode. So now the autopilot is hooked into the HSI, which is hooked into our uh, LTN 92 here. Now, this is going to perform navigation. Now, this will be a good time if we take a look at the speed. Yeah, far too fast. Let's get all the flaps in. Good job I don't have uh, the damage turned on for this tutorial. I'd have ripped the wings off already. Very fast climb because we're very light. Uh, let's keep the climb going. All right, so let's look at copying over the route from this one. So if we again come over to the waypoints page, waypoints page, we see they're not there. So to do that, we've got the remote key here on Q. RMT, click that one and then go to the master on whichever the device is that you filled the route out. It's usually going to be the pilots. Um, so scroll along. It's like the Airbus. So the up arrow scrolls down. Imagine it like the up arrow is you're pushing the piece of paper up just like on the Airbuses. So push the paper up to go down and uh, that moves us over to the cross fill master. Hit enter once and we're okay there. Do the same over here except we want to go to the cross fill slave and so 
push the paper down by pressing the uh, down arrow to go to the top. Again, it's just like you're not scrolling up through a menu. You're scrolling. Imagine it like you're pushing a piece of paper with your finger. It's kind of like scrolling on a phone. You know, you move your finger up on the phone to scroll down. Well, it's the same concept here. And so into the crossfill slave, hit enter, and that's now ready to receive. We're going to do the same on the engineer's one. Crossfill slave, enter, and that's now ready to receive. Now, if we come over to the master, we see there's 21 waypoints in there. We're going to hit enter, and now it's going to say system B is ready. That's this guy. And system C, that's this guy. If we, for example, come out of here, press clear. Now it's not ready. See system C, we've got the question mark because it's not ready uh, to receive. So, again, just make sure you've got the... And what this will do, one, one thing important is it'll do any waypoints that were in here or are in here are going to get deleted when you perform this procedure, which is what you want, right? You want these two to have the same copy of what's here. Otherwise, why are you doing this procedure? Hit enter to transmit, so we'll do that, and it's going to take about one second per waypoint. I'll bring you back when it's done. All right, with crossfill complete and the after takeoff checks done, let's have a look now at the flight plan page. And once again, you can see we're about six miles from South Sox. That's currently where we're going. We know we're going there because we've got the two button there. But because it was a direct to, there's no from on the TJ side. So once we cross South Sox and we'll be going towards Buzzard, we will expect to see a from South Sox to Buzzard. And again, we've got the distance information here. If we hit the expand button, we can see it's going to change to the times there. We've just seen it's jumped over to Buzzard. And again, now we've got the from South Sox. And so we've got the times here. This is cumulative, so it's going to take four minutes to Buzzard. It's going to take nine minutes. And that includes going to Buzzard. And then it's going to be 15 minutes there. If you hit expand again, we're going to get the ETAs. That perhaps makes more sense. And so six minutes and then add another five or six minutes onto there. That's going to equal 12. And so if we come back here and there we see it, we see it's actually nine. So it's going to round off to the nearest minute. And oftentimes you're going to lose 30 seconds, 40 seconds or add. And it's the same in miles. It's to the nearest mile if we take a look here at the distance. So it doesn't have the point, whatever. And so sometimes it can be a little bit inaccurate if you're trying to be super precise. The other option there that you see is the DBW. That stands for distance between waypoints. So it's 20 miles to Buzzards, it's 36 miles from Buzzard to Say, it's uh, 37 from Say to HTO, and so on. And if we come over to the distance, you can see with those uh, distances accumulating, that they're making sense. All right, we'll leave that. Uh, I like to cruise with it on the distance page, and then that's going to keep me informed, literally in miles, how far to the next specific waypoint, and I can refer to the flight plan there. All right, and as we continue to climb, you see we've got quite a nice uh, crosswind there blowing us from right to left. It's time actually to take a look at the waypoints on here. Now, notice the crossfield there is complete. Yes, the waypoints are in, but if you look, the flight plan is not, even though we have done the flight plan. So the easiest way to resolve this issue is find out what is the waypoint we're currently going towards. Well, we see there it's buzzard waypoint three and so if we hit direct here and go direct to buzzard so we'll put b and seems like the initial guess is correct of course it's not going to include waypoints that are not in your flight plan and so buzzard will go direct there we'll accept that and now if we come over to the flight plan we see we've got pretty much the same information i'm going to do the same down here as well and so direct to hit b enter enter and now all of that is in Take a look now. It's the time for the updating. We said we would do this on this video. In the top left, you see that letter E there. That means updates are enabled. But it currently isn't doing anything. We'd know if it was doing something because we'd get the update light lighting up here and we'd see the letter E change to something else. It would either be a T for try mixing or an R for radio updates. If you want to learn out about try mixing, check out the longer video. It's going to be too long to put into this one. But suffice to say, it is important we update these systems, so let's take a look at the radio updates. This uses VOR DME beacons to get very precise updates on these systems. Of course, the longer these are aligned for the INS systems, the further they drift. And one of the big advantages of these versus the older SIVA INS systems is 
these can update their drift during flight. So to do that, what we need to do is come over to the status page, scroll down one to get to this menu here, the change update mode. We're going to hit expand, not the enter button to get inside that. And here you can see currently updates are, are enabled. That's why it says disable because it's like disable it because it's on. The same for the GPS. You see Trimix is currently disabled. And so the option is there to enable it. And RNAV is also disabled. And so the option there to enable it. Just for simplicity, let's enable them all. So come over to Trimixing. We'll hit enter. And you can see straight away we get the letter T in the top left. So that means this system is currently updating itself using the Trimix method. We're going to come down to enable RNAV and turn that on as well. And now we see R in the top right. That means it's updating using the radio information. But we can see there that is now system one updating. So if we come back to the position page, we want the same to happen on the secondary system. And that's only going to happen if these VOR beacons are A, tuned in and B, at a suitable range. So if you're too close to a VOR beacon or too far away, it won't do it. To prove the point, let's untune radio two. So that's going to be your side again. The update on my side only uses my system. The update on yours only uses yours. So let's throw uh, a frequency that isn't picking up. So for example, this one on your side. And now we're going to do the same again. So we're going to come over to the status page, scroll down one, change update mode. We're going to hit expand. And like before, we'll enable Trimix and you see straight away that one's beginning to take place. We're going to enable the RNAV as well. And look, that now not taking place. So if we come over to the position information here and here, you can see these systems are very close together, but they're not actually the same. And if you want to pause the video at any moment in time, you'll see they are close, but they're not exact. And so what we want to do is get this one updating over the more precise radio DME mode as well. And in order to pull that off and to get this light lighting up, we need to give it a suitable beacon now there's no reason why we can't use the same beacon that we're using we see it's 58 miles away so we want to tune 1270 in on your side and so let's get the 70 in first dial it down to 12 we can see now your side is picking up the same beacon there dme2 and straight away we're getting system 2 updating and that's signified now by the letter r in the top left corner and so now both of these systems are going to update. And if you take a look at the position information, if I hold the view there, you're going to see these are closely and closely more matching. <laughs> My commander, the English language is terrible today. But you can look at that. They're almost exactly the same now. 38, 31 and the second one as well. 60, 71, 82. They're perfectly matching now. And so that's uh, an example there. The flight engineers system never does update using uh, VOR DME. This guy depends entirely on trimixing. And so if we come over to status again, um, scroll down, even though it does have the options as before, he's going to stick to trimixing. And this is, of course, uh, going to give more weight to our twos because our twos match. And again, for further information, do check that uh, longer video out. As we continue our flight from Boston down to Washington, it's time for the final part of this tutorial, and that is going to be adding in, editing, and removing specific waypoints during flight. So once again, coming down here to the flight plan page, you can see this is currently what's happening. We're on the way from Buzzard to Say, which happens to be a VOR beacon. We're nine miles away, and if we expand, uh, that reckons it's going to take place in about one minute's time. ETA there is at 19.39. In fact, I think it's already switched over to the following waypoint. We've got the alert light here letting us know we're less than two minutes away. If we want to go somewhere else, let's come to over to the waypoints page. This is where we're going to edit things. And so let's say, no, we're fine, say, we're fine to HTO, but this rifle waypoint, we want to do something about that. So if you want to edit it, simply hit the clear button and type whatever other waypoint is. Uh, so let's clear. That's going to delete it altogether. Now it's going to go from HTO to JEDIC. And let's say we're fine with HTO, we're fine with JEDIC, but we want something in between. So what you want to do is scroll down to the HTO. You see we're currently on the way direct to HTO. 
Press enter once and that's going to keep HTO there, but move everything else down and that's going to create this gap here. Now this gap, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just for example put in um, JFK because that is uh, near this area anyway. We'll put that one in, hit OK and that's now going to go from where we are anyway, say to HTO and then to JFK and then onto JEDIC. Now bearing in mind what we've just done does not copy itself across. So if we come back to the waypoints page and scroll down, we can see we've got say, which we're currently doing, currently going towards HTO, that's in, but after HTO, this one's still got the waypoint rifle in and then JEDIC, whereas this one's got JFK and JEDIC. So you've got to either manually type it in or do what we did before with the crossfill and get them all across. And again, to edit it, let's uh, edit rifle to match JFK. So we're going to select the rifle page, hit enter once, sorry, correction, over to the rifle, press clear once, not again, because that would delete the entire waypoint. And we're now going to put what we've got in on our side. So we're going to type in Juliet Foxtrot Kilo, enter, and now these two are more closely matching. Don't forget the flight engineers panel needs that doing as well. But because the autopilot only uses this system in terms of where to go, of course, all these three systems work together to figure out where they are. But this one is the only one hooked up for navigation, unless, of course, uh, you're flying as the first officers with, uh, you know, putting his flight director on first. In that case, it's important to keep the flight director, the sorry, the flight officers one correct. If these waypoints do not match, such as uh, in this case, they're not going to match because the flight engineer's one has got a different waypoint. It's only, again, going to pay attention to our one. So it doesn't matter that the rest don't match. If you then look at one of the others where the flight plan doesn't match, the system is clearly going to tell you, hey, you need to be steering in such and such a direction. And this one's going to say, no, no, you're doing fine. But in terms of where the aircraft is, which is what's really important, they're all going to be in an agreement. And that is going to be the end of the intro video, which was far longer than what I intended. But uh, again, it's uh, it's a system that is, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to use. Certainly hands-on if you're doing your ANAV approaches and so on, because, again, there's no vertical information. There's no speed information. You're going to have to manage that all yourself. What you do have, if you come to the flight plan, is which waypoint you're going to, how far away it is. And with that, you can use your brain power. Power to figure out uh, your speed and height. And that is really going to be the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And don't forget, if you do want the longer version of this tutorial that's two and a half hours long, that covers every single aspect of that thing and an entire flight from A to B, make sure you check out the long version. I'll leave that in description. It'll be uploaded, if not right this instant, certainly by uh, the 22nd of November 2022. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.